at Trek. Um, so this meeting is being recorded for anyone who's unable to attend and we'll also put the information on our website and you can direct people, um, any of your friends or neighbors who were unable to make it. And we'll also share our contact information as well too. Um, just before we get started into the presentation, um, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Laura Rothrock. I'm the president of the Long Island City Partnership and executive director of the LIC bid. And um, I have here with me today, the team. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Angel and let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Angel. I'm the director of operations for the current LIC bid. And Charles. Hi, I'm Charles Yu, uh, Vice President of uh, Economic Development. Dana. Hi, everyone. I'm Senior Manager of Bid Operations and Retail Support. And Henry. Hi. Oh, thanks for coming. I'm Henry. I'm the IBZ East Area Manager um, at the Long Island City Partnership. And before we get into the presentation, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, so as I mentioned, this meeting is going to be recorded and put on our website. We do want to save the Q&A to the end because some of the questions might be answered throughout the presentation. Um, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function in Zoom that you'll see at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can also use the Q&A function, which is at the bottom. Um, please use that instead of the chat because with the Q&A, it'll be easier if everything's, all the questions are in one place. And also that way everyone could see your question. Um, and um, when you do have a question, it'd be great if you can introduce yourself and say uh, how you are involved in Long Island City, whether you're a resident or a business owner or a property owner, because some, sometimes the that your role in the community will help us better answer how the bid expansion will affect you uh, most directly. So with that, I will, um, yes, I will get into the presentation. And I see we have a question about the difference between the partnership and the bid, which is, which is part of the presentation. Um, so what is a bid? So for those of you that aren't familiar with a bid, uh, a bid is an organization where property owners within a defined set of boundaries pay an assessment that goes, instead of going into the citywide tax fund, it goes directly back into the organization. So in New York City, the assessment is collected on the Department of Finance property tax bill. Um, but again, it goes back into the organization and bids provide core services such as supplemental sanitation and marketing. Um, by law, bids can the city can't reduce services in a bid area and bid services are supplemental to what the city provides. So we're not replacing city services and the city can't reduce services. It's, it's supplemental to what's already being provided. Bids act as a steward of the neighborhood and um, the assessment. So there are 76 bids throughout the city and each bid has a different assessment formula that's based on the, um, the character of the neighborhood. So um, what might make sense as an assessment formula in one district is different than another district. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the assessment formula for the LIC bid. Um, some leases allow for part of the assessment to be passed through to tenants. Uh, this is for commercial tenants and not for residential tenants. You can't pass through uh, assessments to residential tenants, which we'll talk about more. Um, and the bid is managed by a board of directors that's elected by local stakeholders. Um, bids are also public-private partnerships. So we have four elected officials that also sit on our board of directors, which is the council member, the borough president, the controller, and the mayor, which is represented by the New York City Department of Small Business Services. Um, next slide. So the LIC bid was created in 2005, and you, and you can see the dark teal color here is the north south the north subdistrict. That's the original bid. Um, it was expanded to the south subdistrict in 2017, and we have more maps in the presentation where you can look a little bit closer. 
Um, and the bid is managed by the Long Island City Partnership. So the Long Island City Partnership is the economic development organization for Long Island City. We do more than just provide the bid services. So we have um, a business assistance team. We work closely with um, cultural, um, cultural partners. We do a lot marketing and promotion for Long Island City. Um, so the partnership is a larger organization and the bid is a piece within the partnership. Um, the, the bid is has a management agreement with the Long Island City Partnership. So there's some economies of scale in that we can manage the bid services, but we also are we also can provide um, larger services throughout the district. And I'll explain a little bit more about that, too, in the presentation. Um, and we provide some of those supplemental services that I was talking about. Uh, the North subdistrict and the South subdistrict, they each have their own service budget because the needs are a little bit different, but they have shared management and administrative costs. Um, the assessment formula was recently updated, and again, we'll talk about that, but uh, the, the total budget for the current bid is $1 million. So for the North and South subdistrict, the properties in total are assessed $1 million annually. Um, so the supplemental services that we provide are retail support, coordination with city agencies, and helping um, our the the area within the bid help helping businesses and property owners navigate government. And also, we're constantly walking the streets, and if we see issues that we need to report to various city agencies, this are just an uh, example of some of them. Um, that's a big part of what we do. We also provide direct supplemental sanitation services. So we have sidewalk cleaning and snow removal. We have a seven person team that is out there seven days a week. You might've seen them um, that are providing sanitation. Um, we, we also do graffiti removal, maintenance, district marketing, beautification and horticulture. You probably have seen our, our tulips, our begonias in the tree pits, and also the hanging baskets throughout the district. And then in the winter, we have the winter lighting, and you may have also seen our snowflakes in the winter. Um, and then next slide, um, just a little bit more about what the dedicated district manager does. As I mentioned, it helps liaise between the business and property owners and government agencies. We also work really closely with the precincts, in this case, the 108th and the 114th, um, other city agencies, and also Breaking Ground, which is a homeless services provider. Um, and if you have questions on any of the public safety, Angel and Dana, uh, they're the ones that are talking to the precinct every day. So um, they that's, that's how we help um, advocate for better public safety and coordinate with the precincts locally. Um, and then here's just some examples of some of the streetscape issues like fixing street lights, aban abandoned vehicles, uh, legal dumping and repaving roads, um, as well as providing outreach on new policies that are coming out of city government or new initiatives. And we also do a lot of outreach on community events and neighborhood news. So our events of the partnership and the bid, but also um, events that other institutions and um, cultural institutions and businesses are having throughout the community. Um, we also advocate for infrastructure improvements, which is a big part of what we do. Um, so we're a little bit different than other bids in that the partnership has a dedicated business assistance team, um, and that's under the partnership, but we coordinate with the bid. So if you're in the bid boundaries, um, Dana, for example, who is uh, the ambassador who's walking the streets every day, if she gets a request on business assistance, she can then refer it to Charles and his team. Um, and the things that we help businesses with are retail support, um, again, helping businesses comply with some of the changing policies coming out of the city, um, connecting them with other services, um, financing. We actually have a contract with the city, with SBS, to help businesses um, connect with financing so that they can start and grow in Long Island City. We also help businesses find space, um, expedite the move-in process, and we host a number of business seminars, member-to-member -member events, and webinars with professionals that can share information throughout the year. Um, so as far as the bid formation and expansion phases, 
This process is outlined by the Department of Small Business Services, which is also known as SBS, and um, they require a planning, outreach, and legislative process. So the planning process is when a steering committee gets together that's made up of stakeholders within the expansion area, and they define the boundaries, the services, the budget, and the assessment formula. And so the planning process can take, you know, six months or more. We've we've been working on this planning process for, I would say, close to two years. Um, and so the boundaries, the services, some of these things have have changed as we've talked to stakeholders and to see, you know, what makes the most sense and what people are seeing in the community as far as what the need is. Um, and then once that plan is finalized, we enter into the outreach phase, which is where we are now, um, where we have to demonstrate broad-based support for our plan. And once we're able to do that, we then move into the legislative phase, which is when there is um, we present to officially to the community boards, which in this case, is community board one and two. We have a city planning review, the city council votes, and the mayor signs it into law. So the legislative phase takes about nine to 12 months to complete. Um, and that process is, is prescribed, the timeline is prescribed. Um, but we, again, are right in the outreach phase now. So um, we that's part of why we're having this meeting tonight is to let people know about this process um, and to answer any questions and hopefully get your support. So looking at the expansion boundaries, the blue area is the current bid and the light orange color is the expansion area. We're actually actually looking at two different expansion subdistricts. So one would be the west, what we're calling the west expansion, and that's west of Sunnyside Yards. Um, so Henry, if you just want to circle that, if you can circle that with your cursor. So that's that is what we're referring to as the West expansion. And then on the other side of Sunnyside Yard, which is in the IBZ area, the industrial business zone, is what we're referring to as the East expansion. So we're looking at one bid expansion, but sub-districts within the bid, the LSE bid. Um, and because the IBZ area, the needs are quite different from the West expansion, um, we are, we've had two different steering committees for the two different expansions, and the proposals are slightly different, which we'll get into um, as far as the services and the budget. So the East expansion, um, you can see here, the East expansion, which is um, east of Sunnyside Yards um, in the IBZ area, um, this is just a map to show the properties that would be assessed if the if the expansion was successful. Um, there are a number of exempt properties here too, which are city owned. So properties that are exempt are either owned by a 501c3 nonprofit or city owned. Um, so we just wanted to to highlight that there are a number of exempt properties, and especially in the east expansion. Um, and if you go to the next slide, here are the members of the East Expansion Steering Committee, which is a, a combination of um, property owners and tenants. Um, so at the beginning of the planning process, we put out a needs assessment survey that we send out to all the stakeholders within the potential expansion boundaries and um, ask for their feedback. So we conducted the survey in 2022, and for the East uh, expansion, we found that the top five requested services were um, increased sanitation, public safety, street and sidewalk repairs, horticulture and beautification, and traffic and transportation management. Um, so here are some pictures of current conditions in the East expansion. And you can see there's a lot of weed overgrowth, trash, um, and as more and more, um, the, the, the East expansion area has been, you know, historically industrial. And so there wasn't a lot of foot traffic, um, in the district and a lot of public infrastructure that was not being maintained. And so as there's been more investment going into the East expansion area and more foot traffic, more office workers, especially, um, you know, we've we've heard from some of those stakeholders and 
that they've asked us to explore providing services um, and forming a bid here. So if you go to the next slide, um, this is just to juxtapose some of the current services that we're providing in the current bid. Um, so for the East, we're looking at a total budget. And again, this would just be for the East subdistrict of $650,000. So most of that money would go to targeted sanitation um, and as well as the dedicated district manager, marketing and winter lighting. Um, we do have a uh, one-time capital equipment expenses. We've been hearing that that trash cans are really needed. So we're including that in the one-time capital. But um, we think this is a, a good budget for uh, that will last us for several years because anytime you want to increase your total budget, you have to go back through a whole legislative process again. So we wanted to make sure that we had enough um, money in the budget to um, be able to provide services for the next few years. Um, so the assessment formula that we're looking at for the East expansion is based on square footage. And this, this formula was derived after a lot of back and forth with the steering committee. Um, so because the footprint in the East expansion is um, mostly industrial properties, um, but they really, so the, the steering committee wanted to use square footage. Um, and the way that you can think about the, the way the assessment formula works is you take your total budget and then you divide it by the total square footage in the district and then you can come up with a rate and then you apply that rate to each property. Um, but there's other ways that you can can do the formula as well outside of square footage. Um, we for this for the east expansion because there was such a large um, variation in the size of properties so we have one property that was close to a million square feet but then a much then smaller properties as well um we came up with this formula that is under 40,000 square feet you would pay a base rate of about 11 cents a foot and then between 40 and 99,999 you would pay um, about seven cents a foot, and then above 100,000 square feet, you would pay about three cents per square foot. But you can think of it as a sliding scale. So if your property is over 100,000 square feet, you would pay all three of these rates. And the reason why we did it that way is because when we looked at initially just straight square footage, because there was such a variation in building size, some of the properties were paying, you know, a much larger portion of the budget. So this this way that we were managed um, to come up with this formula, it didn't put too much of the burden on like the larger properties or the smaller properties, and it it, it was able to um, evenly distribute the budget in a way that was fair. And we had representation from some of the smaller property owners and the larger property owners that came ultimately came up with this um, with this assessment formula. So the median annual assessment would be just under $3,000. So that would be $3,000 a year for the entire property. Um, and 75% of the annual assessments are below uh, 6,500. Um, and so if you go to the next slide, um, where we are as far as getting statements of support, I should also say there are no residents in the East expansion. So um, there are no residential properties. Um, so um, in the West, there are. So when I get to that, you'll see that we track that a little differently. Um, so SBS has two goals that are an either or type goals. Um, they want us to either get um, statements of support from 51% of all the tax lots or 51% of the assessed value in the district. Um, we are very close to achieving the 51% of the assessed value. We have about, we have 46% um, in support. And as far as number of tax lots, we have 21% in support. Um, we have to get broad-based support from the commercial tenants as well, but there's not a specific threshold that we have to meet in order to move to the legislative phase. Um, we're, we're, what you'll see in the yellow here is what we're calling a soft yes, and that's because we've spoken to these property owners and they've said, you know, verbally that they are supportive, but we still need to get them to sign the statement of support. Um, and same with the tenants as well. Um, for the for the tenants, 
um, a lot of the tenants were because the in the IBZ, it's better not retail tenants. It's not as easy just to just walk in and talk to someone. We're really relying on a lot of the property owners to connect us directly with the tenants um, and also the tenants to help connect us with some of the other tenants in the district. I should also say that on the tenant side, we don't have um, we have a pretty good database, but we're also estimating um, the total number of of tenants in the district. Um, so now moving on to the West expansion. So the green is where we're looking to expand in both both the North and South subdistrict. Um, and then here are the property owners and the tenants that were that made up the steering committee that helped us finalize this plan. And again, we conducted a needs assessment survey on the West. And um, this was in the, the draft boundaries for the West expansion. And as far as the responses, we, we heard that public safety was the most important, followed by horticulture, traffic and transportation management, advocacy and increased sanitation. And if you go to the next slide, um, just some additional feedback that we got, people thanking us um, for doing this effort. When we sent out the survey, there was the opportunity to comment um, as well for any questions or concerns. Um, so our response has been really positive so far. We, this is, these are some examples of current conditions in the expansion area. Um, and you can see there's illegal dumping and trash. And this is um, some photos of our current services in the bid. Um, we also conduct every year for the current bid, we conduct a satisfaction survey asking people how satisfied they are with the bid. And we this is the most recent survey we conducted in the summer of 2022. And we had um, overwhelmingly positive, 98% people responded that they were satisfied. They, the majority had long-term area confidence and they um, knew who we were. Um, so as far as the West expansion budget, so we're um, we're looking at again most of the money would go to the sanitation team, and we're looking at a total increased budget of three hundred and seventy five thousand. So that would be in addition to the million in that is in the current um, bid total budget. Um, so the way that the West expansion formula works, it's complicated, um, but we're we're looking to use the same formula for the expansion areas that we're using currently. Um, I should say that fully residential tax lots are assessed $1 annually. So if you're a condo owner or you are um, or you own a property that's fully residential, they're assessed uh, $1 dollar annually. Um, but it, for commercial properties, the way that it works is it's actually a combination of square footage and assessed value. And again, this is the from the original um, actually, I shouldn't say the original formula. This formula was actually updated several years ago um, to include the mixed use class, which I'll talk about. But so the assessment formula is based on square footage and assessed value. And the way that it works is in the north subdistrict, it's 50% AV, 50% square feet. And then in the south subdistrict, it's just weighted a little differently with 10% AV, which is assessed value, and 90% square footage. Um, mixed use properties are assessed at 80% of the commercial rate, but for the whole property, both the residential and commercial portion. So, um, and the reason for that is because the, um, after the 2001 rezoning, when a number of residential mixed use properties came into the district, um, they were bringing, you know, in a lot of the foot traffic and were contributing to the need for the supplemental services. So that's why um, the bid at the time changed the formula, uh, a few years ago, changed the formula to include mixed use properties. Um, so that these are these are not condos, these are income producing properties that are rentals. And again, you can't pass on the assessment to a residential tenant. Um, and then what's a little bit different about the expansion that we're proposing is that some of the side streets, we're proposing a 66% reduced rate um, and the reason why for that is because some of the main corridors, and I think it, there's a map actually on the next slide. Yep. Um, so some of the main commercial corridors like Northern Boulevard, um, Queens Plaza, Vernon, um, and 23rd, 
they need the same level of service in order to maintain the same level of quality. But some of the side streets, um, we determined after our analysis that they would um, they would they would require less of uh, frequency as far as services, and they also have less things like tree pits and capital needs. And so when we calculated when we did the math, we calculated that um, that they would actually need 66% less. So we thought it made sense to have them have a reduced rate as far as their assessment, um, while again, still maintaining the same quality level of quality and service. Um, so as far as our progress on the West, we did achieve the goal of the assessed value um, in that we've gotten 62% of the assessed value that of the property owners that have signed the statement of support. Um, we have 83 signed ballots from resident te residential tenants and from condo owners. Um, and as far as the number of properties, um, we have 26% um, if you take the total number of properties. Um, and again, on the West, we have, we're kind of have this soft yes of we have a number of people that we have, um, that have stated their support, but we, are still waiting for them to sign the statement of support. Um, and on the tenant side, we have 14% um, that have signed the statement of support and we're hoping to get that to 23% or even greater if we can. Um, and, and so that's where we are currently as far as our levels of support. Um, and then as far as the outreach, so we've been doing a lot of emails, phone calls, um, stopping in in person. We sent out the mailing. We had to do a mailing where we sent out the statements of support and an explanation of the bid expansion to all the stakeholders in the boundaries. So that was all the property owners and the tenants and the residents. The property owners are a little easier to identify because we have the Department of Finance records, but the the um, the, all the residential buildings that are rental residential buildings, we stopped in and, and provided them all the information. Um, and we, and excuse me, the, the um, commercial tenants, we also did a lot of canvassing. Um, we held four public meetings um, back in late October, early November um, that were in person. And we've had some articles in the LIC post. Um, and we've also, had social media posts and posted it in our newsletter. Um, you can also see the picture on the top right, LaGuardia Community College um, was kind enough to help us get this sign up. Um, so we're continuing to do outreach and we appreciate everyone um, helping us to get the word out. Um, I think that slide before that was just some examples of some of the press. Um, and so as far as next steps, we are continu continuing to distribute the statements of support. Um, we need to meet the thresholds that were laid out by SBS, which I explained is a majority of the assessed value from the property owners or a majority of the tax lots from the property owners, the demonstrated broad-based support from commercial and residential tenants. Um, we need to collect letters of support from local elected officials. And once the thresholds are met and um, and then we will move into the legislative phase where there are more public meetings and hearings and opportunities to comment. Um, and our goal is to provide these services by summer 2024 because the city is on a fiscal year of July 1st to June 30th. Um, and the way that the billing works, the if everything goes well and we're able to hit the legislative phase this spring, um, we should be able to provide services the earliest in July 2024 would be when the first billing would be for the expansion area. Um, we also have the information in a different in additional languages on our website, um, and we have the paper ballots as well in the other languages. So if you or someone you know would like this information, um, you can access that on our website as well. Um, so I know that was a lot of information and I wanna open it up to uh, for Q&A. So you can either put your questions in the Q&A or feel free to raise your hand and we can call on you and you, you can turn on your camera and speak. Um, but again, if you could just let us know um, if you're a, a 
your name and if you're a, a property or a resident in the district, that would be helpful. Um, Roberta? Uh, yeah, hi, um, this looks a great initiative. So like a little bit of an intro, I currently live in the current DID, I guess, on the 44th Drive and Jackson Avenue intersection. Um, but just one comment I kind of particularly wanted to make is, is about increased sanitation. It does seem that like in a lot of cases, it is one of the most pressing issues. And honestly, if I walk around, you know, the, my current area and areas around that are not yet in DID, I honestly cannot see any benefit of the extra proposed sanitation um, because the, the, the areas around here in some cases look like even dirtier than, than others. So first of all, I just kind of wanted to ask like in the current BID, is there a plan to kind of maybe increase uh, a little bit of focus on that? And then the second thing is on the proposed BID is, you know, you've, you've, you've shown photos of like huge trash piles and everything. So obviously there's a lot of areas that need attention right now, but your goal is, you know, to, be operational by 2024. So again, is there maybe in the meanwhile anything that could be done on that, even if it's like a volunteer event to, you know, help raise awareness of it? And, you know, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. So um, as far as increasing the levels of sanitation in the current bid, um, we haven't we haven't discussed that. But it's something that we've we'd be open to doing, and we'd have to discuss with our board of directors. Um, we we do respond to so the the team is out there they're not there out there 24 7 but they are out there uh seven days a week and sometimes you know the winds will blow and um they'll there'll be spots that we'll have to call them to go back and um to clean um so i'm gonna also turn it over to angel to answer some of the questions about the operations but as far as the of what's if it's if there's areas outside of the bid that are having issues with sanitation um we can put in 311 requests and um we can um if especially if it's like a legal dumping for example or if it's um if it's businesses that are putting their trash out um too earlier in the wrong time and their carter isn't coming there's there's been instances of that where we've had to call sanitation and have them come pick it up but we don't we're not providing the 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 sanitation team that's sweeping there like they are in the current bid um but angel i don't know if you want to elaborate yeah yeah so i could add in so yeah our our team right now we have seven um team members out there and they are out there seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. So really out there during like main commercial or business hours. Um, so yeah, it is it is tough to keep up with the amount of trash that is is often um, produced around. But something that we also work on that is aside from our team sanitation is advocating for more um, help with commercial trash uh, times when. A lot of the times the trash that's on the sidewalk is, you know, from businesses that close early and they, and they sit out there for longer. So we're working on initiatives that would, um, you know, keep trash off the sidewalk for longer, keeping them cleaner um, and making it easier for our team and others to keep the sidewalks clean as well. I hope that answered your question. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? I see one in the chat. Um, it says, hi, I'm a resident of Sunnyside near the proposed expansion. What's the role of corporate stakeholders in the expansion process? Um, so I am not, I, I guess as far as corporate, if you mean property owners, so the, the property owners um, or the, and the commercial tenants, they're involved in the process because they're the ones that are paying the assessment. So their, you know, th their vote is is highly weighted in this process. Um, as far as you know, the city is concerned, um, we also have um, we're we're trying to have outreach to all the different stakeholders within the district. So um, 
I don't know if that answers your question, but if there's a, a commercial property owner or a commercial tenant, then we're trying to reach them and, and we want their feedback. So that that's their role. And, and we've we've done a lot of outreach to asking people to serve on the steering committee. Um, and then we've heard from some people, you know, that they didn't want to steer, sit on the steering committee, but they wanted to be involved or they were supportive, but they didn't necessarily have the bandwidth to um, sit on the committee. Um, someone asked about the difference between the partnership and the bid. I hope that I answered that question. Um, the partnership is, we have, on the partnership side, we have a team of 12 people. Um, on And uh, on the bid side, we have, we don't actually have staff of the bid, but there are, um, the partnership has a management agreement to manage the bid. Um, and Dana and Angel, their roles are dedicated to the bid, um, as well as the direct service providers. Um, are there any other questions? Did I answer all of them? I'm just looking at my team because I'm I'm not the most savvy with um, Zoom technology. <laughs> yeah, we don't have any more questions in the Q&A. It doesn't look like anyone's hands are raised. Oh, Roberta. Hi, sorry again. I just then maybe wanted to uh, do a little follow up clarifying. So like, if we do see issues, let's say related to public sanitation there, or like mm -hmm. that we would refer to free one one, and we are in the BID area, would it actually be more helpful to make somebody from BID aware of it? Like, do you have, let's say, like a more direct connection to, you know, the, the city services? Or should we just still go through like free one one? Yeah, so I can take that one. Yeah, so I'm going to write mine and Dana's um, info in the chat here. So if you want to take that down. So it's it's still great to send things to 311. Um, we encourage people to continue to do that. But what is useful is if you send something to 311 and then you can send us the service number and we can often expedite things um, because we have close relationships with the city agencies that deal with it. So DSNY has been a great partner. Um, so if you see an illegal dumping or a dirty sidewalk or anything like that, if you submit a three on one and send that service number over to us or let us know and send pictures and all of that, we can make sure that that is seen too quickly. But in general, um, since you are in the bid, we're, we're really happy to be connected and um, we can connect offline as well with any other um, things that you want to chat about. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think as far as follow up from us too, well, we can put the links in the chat for the statements of support. Um, and if you are within the expansion boundaries and you would like to sign the statement of support, please do. Um, we can also share our contact information if you have any additional questions um, that you'd like to ask. Um, also, if you're interested in signing up for our newsletter, I would really encourage you to do so um, because we'll have we have a lot of information not just about the bid and the bid expansion, but also just um, the partnership and our events as well as events um, and uh, and um, different promotions that are going on in the neighborhood. Um. Okay, it doesn't look like there's any other questions. Um, last call for questions. <laughs> okay, Charles, Angel, Dana, Henry, did I leave anything out? No, I think you covered everything uh, unless there are additional questions, but it doesn't seem like so. Great. Yeah. And please send us any questions that may come up um, at our emails or our, all our contact information is on the website as well. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.